Hello and welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is for Scrap and Stamp Canada and their Random Acts of Cardness Word Challenge. Today is Snarky and I thought I'd pull out some of these old friends of ours that I haven't used in a while. But this is Cat Chat from Tim Holtz and then also this bird talk. I just love these little birds. Oh my goodness, they're just adorable. So I thought they would work really perfectly with these snarky uh, small talk little uh, sticker labels here that we're going to be using for the sentiment portion of our card. And look at this, there are so many different pages, so many different little sentiments on there. And I love how they also have the uh, black background with the white text. So I think these are going to be a lot of fun to work with. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is create some fun backgrounds and I thought it would be really great to pull out my gel press that I haven't used in forever and a day. So I'm just going to go ahead, this is a 5 by 7 and I'll link uh, to some different sizes as well down below. But I just thought it would be fun to create some abstract uh, backgrounds and I'll just pull out the uh, gel plate here. I like using it on my Tim Holtz glass mat. Um, because when I stick it down to the mat, it doesn't move. So I'll go ahead and stick it down here and it is not going anywhere. It is it is on there. Um, you can't really see it here, but there are a few uh, air bubbles um, just underneath it. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that it is stuck down and not going to go anywhere when I um, go ahead and start working with it and just get rid of some of those air bubbles. So once I get those worked out, I can go ahead and I thought it would be fun to work with some stencils. So I'm going to pull out my um, Distress Oxides that I'm going to be using with this today. So we have some Peacock Feathers, some Faded Jeans, and Cracked Pistachio. I really like this color combination and I thought it would be fun to work with. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and to start out with, I'm just going to apply it directly onto that gel plate. Um, Hopefully you can see the ink there. It's showing up actually kind of rather nicely. Um, so I'm just actually just blotting these on top of that gel press. No rhyme or reason to where they're going. I just want to get um, as much ink as possible onto this gel plate. Now, if you're worried about contamination or getting some inks onto your oxides, not to worry. Um, if you get a little bit of ink, you can just actually brush them off onto a piece of paper, brush your ink pad off and it should come off. Um, it shouldn't, um, really mark up your ink pad too badly so not to worry there. Alright so I've got those colors um, onto the gel plate and then I just have some cardstock that I have just kind of cut down that I want to be using. I'm pulling out my brayer just to smooth some of those colors together and get them evenly onto that gel plate. Now I am going to apply this brayer directly onto a piece of cardstock and just to clean it off and we're going to keep that. We're actually going to use this piece as a part of a background as well. Um, that's what I really like about gel pressing is you get a ton of different looks even when you're using stencils or just the brayer itself. Um, there's some unique different backgrounds that you can get out of this. So this is just a geometric stencil that I pulled out of my stash. I'm not sure if I can remember where I got this but I'll link to something similar um, that you can get over at Scrap and Stamp. And I'm just laying this cardstock over top and using my fingers to press it down on the back. Now my fingers do get inky with this process but that's okay, I don't mind. If, if you're worried about that you can put a piece of um, like printer paper over top of this uh, just so that you have um, more coverage so that you don't get your fingers inky. Um, slowly pulling this off and look at this. I just love the geometric design that we got from this. I love the subtle ink imaging on the background. I just think that's really neat. Um, again, really cool about this gel press is you get many backgrounds with just one application. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that stencil off and then use a clean piece of cardstock. Lay that down again using my fingers just to go across the back just to get some good impression from that gel plate. And then you just go ahead and pull this up again and you'll get another different look. So um, you can create a lot of backgrounds in a short amount of time, which is really cool. Look at this one. So that's kind of like the negative image of the first one we did. So much fun. And there was still lots of ink on there. So super fun. I'm going to um, go ahead and just kind of continue layering some inks on here and I'll speed this process up so that we can get an idea of where we're headed. Now I just use a baby wipe to clean off my stencils. Um, 
you can use a just like a microfiber cloth, whatever you want. You can wash them off in the sink, but I just had a baby wipe handy and it seemed to work well. So again, I'm just putting down some of these Distress Oxide colors. I used my brayer to smooth out the ink and then um, braid that off onto the scrap piece of paper to my right. Um, this one here, I didn't get as much ink on it. Um, so it's a, again, a very, very subtle background, but we can still work with that. That's not a problem. To clean off your gel plate, again, just using a baby wipe or a microfiber cloth works. Uh, some people like to leave their inks on there um, and just keep layering, that's fine as well. So this color here is Seedless Preserve. Then I'm using Abandoned Coral. And then the last one, uh, what was that? That is the um, Spiced Marmalade that I was using. Again, another beautiful color combination that I really like. Again, just layering the paper over top, um, using your fingers, to break kind of the background and again some beautiful images that you're going to get. I'm going to go ahead and um, layer on layer some stencils on top um, just to give it more dimension and depth but again this process you can create so many backgrounds in such a short period of time. Uh, this stencil is by Cartabella. This is the Jet Wing and I really like the look of this stencil as well. I think it's super fun and we can get um, multiple uh, backgrounds just from this one um, application. So again, just putting the paper down, pressing, and as you can see, um, it goes super fast and um, lots of different backgrounds. Okay, so I have all my backgrounds done. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to pull out my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station here and just use these magnets to hold down uh, the backgrounds that we've created. And I'm pulling out some stencils. You can use any stencils that you have. Um, this one I think I may have gotten at Walmart, I'm not 100% sure, but just lots of different geometric shapes. I'm using the same color of inks that uh, I did the first time around and a blending brush and just layering the different colors over top with these stencils. It definitely gives it a layered look to your background, so if you didn't like how they came out the first time, um, this is a really simple and fun way to um, add just again another another different look to these backgrounds. So I'm just continuing on here just uh, finding some different stencils that I like the look of and what I'll do is I'll be able to get uh, two different uh, stencils on one piece of this cardstock that I have just again using this faded jeans uh, distress oxide a blending brush and just going over top and just creating um, just some more interest to this piece. Again, finding another image that I like, um, pulling out that stencil, layering it on top. Um, I just think these geometric shapes are so much fun. And again, I'll just go ahead and ink up my blending brush and ink over top. Again, I'll continue the same process with the other backgrounds and same uh, types of inks that I've used before, just adding different layers and as you can see here, I've got them all done now and it just again creates a different look. We're going to now move on to die cutting out some squares. I'm using the wonky stitched, uh, rect sorry, wonky stitched square die from My Favorite Things. I just love this die. I think it just adds a unique look to um, the background with uh, this die cutting and it'll create kind of a focal point for my card. As you can see, we have a ton of little backgrounds here that we can use to create focal points for the card. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead and stamped with Memento Tuxedo Black ink and done some Copic coloring with my little images. And look what arrived as I was making this video. This is the old friend stamp set from My Favorite Things. I could not resist using these guys. So I stamped those and colored them as well and got them ready. I think that snarky sentiments and old people just kind of go hand in hand so I think these are gonna be fun to work with. Alright so I have my card base here it's the A2 size card base and it's with my favorite card stock from Amazon it's 120 pounds which creates a beautiful base for your card and I'm just gonna layer up the different backgrounds and images just to see what kind of look I can create. Now I thought that the geometric background needed a little pop of color behind it so I'm just picking out my cardstock color wheel. This is just something that my mom created for me um, with all the different colors of cardstock, just some little samples so I can see what would look great. On the back of them is a corresponding number and it's filed in some 
uh, sheet protectors so I can just go ahead and look for that number pull it out and it's ready to go I'm using my art glitter glue this is fast my favorite uh, glue to use it doesn't leave big glue bubbles on the back and it adheres beautifully so I'm just going to um, adhere these uh, die cut pieces out onto a little bit of cardstock just to frame them out with a bit of color and then I can go ahead and trim those to size and then add them to the card base of my card. Again, using that art glitter glue, it's nice and strong. And once it's down, it is not going to go anywhere. Okay, so now I can go ahead and get the little image that I want to put on the top of this. I just think that looks super cute. Just a nice, simple background and have this little image stand out. And I want to... Um, I was debating whether I was going to glue him right down, but I thought popping him up with some little foam squares would be fun. Again, it would give a different um, layering to the card and add a little bit of interest. So I'll just pop these little foam squares onto the back and then I can release the little paper backings and then adhere that down to the card. I'm just going to continue with the same process layering the gel print backgrounds onto some colored cardstock and then matching them up with some of the little images that I have cut out and colored and then just kind of building them from there and then I will add my sentiments after I've got them all together I can match them up to what I think um, which snarky comment looks best for that image. For these little My Favorite Things images, I wanted to create a different background, so I'm not going to be using the gel pressed, um, sorry, the gel print backgrounds for these. I'm just going to be doing some really simple inking, but it's very effective. It'll ground the image perfectly. So I'm using Mode Lawn Distress Ink just to give um, the appearance of some grass. And then I'll go ahead and use the tumbled glass to create just a sky background. So it's really really simple inking but so effective it just creates a really nice um, background for these images and it really lets the stamped images be the showcase of the front of this card I think that um, it's a, a really fun way to get a lot of cards made as you can see this is a mass making I think I've created about 20 cards at the end of the day and uh, we'll do a flip through at the end of all the cards that were created um, it didn't take me long at all to get them done so it's a lot of fun so as you can see super simple inking and then as soon as you add that little die cut on top it looks awesome again just a really clean look to this and I think that will be great um, and it'll allow the images and the sentiment itself just to be the focal point of this card and you're not going to be uh, distracted by anything else so again just adhering this image down I'm not going to pop these up I'm just going to adhere these straight down with that glitter glue and I think that is just a a beautiful simple and clean card look at that that looks like an abuela to me so much fun I love those little uh, old people characters I think they're so hilarious all right we're going to move on to the next card again I will just simply do the same thing with that mold lawn and the tumbled glass and continue to create some backgrounds for these images. Okay, I've got all my images and backgrounds uh, stuck down and completed, and now it's time for the fun part. It's time to match our snarky sentiments to the right image for the card. And so I just kind of went through um, and picked out the different uh, sentiment that I like. There are so many good ones on here. Like this is a perfect investment if you're looking for some snarky comments. Um, it makes this card making super fun. Um, there is um, adhesive on the back of these, but I will be adding some art glitter glue just to make sure that it doesn't come off. That's the last thing I want is for this little cute little sentiments to be coming off of the card. So I will use some art glitter glue to adhere those down. Okay, as you can see, I have a ton of cards done. There's about 20 of them here. Um, I have some extra backgrounds that I can go ahead and use for future cards. Um, so I'll just do a quick flip through of these. They're so much fun. I love the way that they came out. Those uh, gel print backgrounds were so much fun and gives just a different look to the cards. Using these little um, cat chat and bird talk stamps, again, pulling some older stamps out of my stash and making them new again with these fun snarky sentiments. I love the difference between the um, black background and white sentiment and then the white background with the black sentiment I think those are fun the fact that you have an option um, to choose from is so great 
look at these they just turned out so fun and really I think there was four images each for the cats and the birds um, and then four images as well with the people but look at the different looks and the different takes on these cards that we get out of them so much fun and this again did not take a lot of time at all um, creating those gel print backgrounds will definitely create a ton of card backgrounds for you to use look at these little old people oh, they're so adorable um, again so much fun again the little abuela there I think she is fantastic um, so this is a great way to get a ton of cards in your stash um, yeah look at this guy <laughs> I love this um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed today's video and that it has sparked you to use your old stamp sets um, maybe even some new ones like I did here today as well just add some of these fun snarky sentiments it changes um, the look of your stamps um, again I could have used the sentiments that came with these um, little old people but I just thought these snarky sentiments I mean snarky and old people to me go hand in hand so so much fun so there you go there is all the cards that I managed to create today and thanks so much for joining me I just want to thank you so much for spending your time with me today if you haven't done so already please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're looking for specific materials that I've used in today's video, go ahead and check out the links down below. As well, I'd really love it if you sent me some snail mail. I'm always interested to know what you guys have been up to and what you've been creating, and I'd love to share your cards on my next video. Thanks so much again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. P.S. I love you.